nestled opposite the old houses of Delhi's civil lines, one could pass it by as just another city garden. It has a quaint charm that leaves one to sink in its surroundings the way they feel best. The one kilometer walk through the outer circumference would take the time you pace yourself at. But as you enter, the original gate to it still stands and reminds you that this is after all Kutsia Bagh. The former garden complex and palace of Kutsia Begum, Mughal Emperor Muhammad Shah's wife. It takes a historian to point out, however, that her abode is also an example of lesser-known women in history that did a commendable job of rising to power well before the Fortune magazine list came out. This garden, Kutsia Bagh, was commissioned by Kutsia Begum, the mother of the Mughal Emperor Ahmad Shah. She was the real power behind the throne with the title of Nawab and a high mansab rank of 50,000 unprecedented and unheard of during its time. Unlike most royal ladies, Kutsia Begum was not born to privilege. She had been a dancer who became the concubine of Ahmad Shah's father, Muhammad Shah. It was by the dint of her own personality that she grew to enjoy such power and influence. Kutsia Begum used her power wisely. She paid close attention to affairs of state and was famous for her generosity. We have many more examples of such women from Delhi's history who rose from relatively humble origins and made a name for themselves. One of them is Begum Samru, the ruler of the state of Sardana. The other is Mubarak Begum, the wife of General Octolone. If you can brave the traffic on the ring road on the other side of Kutsia Bagh, then do cross over to the Ladakh Buddhist Vihar. There is a footbridge down the road for the less adventurous. An old market with a monastery and a dharamshala. The thukpa, tigmo bread and curry and other Tibetan food in their little restaurants will be a satiating ending to the walk in the bark.